What is going on everyone? My name is Boyt and I'm back with some more Age Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the bottom of the map in the blue color playing as Ra. His name is Magic, his opponent today in the red color playing as a crazy civilization, not an Egyptian civilization, a Greek civilization. His name is Joe and he's playing Hades, he's red and this map is Oasis. This is a three game series between these two crazy good players. Uh, both would would definitely uh, self-describe themselves as um, Asian mythology addicts of some variety. Uh, 1950 plus, to say the very least, if not 2K plus, both of them. Um, and I'm sure that this game is going to be extremely entertaining. Hades versus Ra on Oasis here. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty interesting map for this matchup, simply because... Uh, it's pretty safe for both players and it does you often get the longest games on oasis you often get uh, marathon games here on oasis because you get these town centers which are nice and back away from your opponents hard to deny the town centers and claim them for yourselves you also get very low amount of hunt so uh jumping jumping ages and stuff like that's really difficult spamming out food based units which are really strong uh to contain on gold mines is really difficult as well so oftentimes these um these maps can be uh very very spicy indeed uh, that being said we do have the ra ra does flourish a little bit on oasis uh, simply because you get those cheaper farms from Shadoof, you get that rain god power, so you get a lot more food income. That was a pretty cheeky catascopus hit there onto the pharaoh, hitting it just as that villager dropped the food off. So actually, um, forcing just a little bit of uh, a little bit of food denial, like two food or something like that, with the with the catascopus, a little bit cute, but. Uh, we have seen that Magic's spotted his two town centers. He hasn't spotted his giraffe yet. He sees a baboon over here. It is a pack of baboon and these giraffe are sitting over here. So this is four giraffe spawn oasis. Both, well, Joe's found his own giraffe over here, which is going to be very, very happy with spotting. Your second hunt here for Greek is really important because oftentimes you don't have enough food in the starting zebra. To advance, and I believe this is only a three zebra spawn. Is that right? What's magic got left? Oh, it's no, it's a five zebra spawn. So it's got a thousand food. A thousand food is actually enough to to advance to the classical age as Greek, doing the hyper modern Greek build order, which you can see on my YouTube channel. Just look that one up to the Zeus one, but it applies for every single Greek god. A little bit of shameless self promotion there. Don't mind if I do. Uh, <laughs> Temple going up now for Joe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yes, you can do this the super fast advance time. But if you find your second hunt's nice and close, there's no problems in walking over to it because it means that these villagers that are gathering from this home hunt can very, very happily move over onto wood and gold and go for a fast second town center if they so choose. And there's very little walking time issues that go on there. Uh, now, if we check out and Magic, on the other hand, he still hasn't scout. Oh, he spots his giraffe. I wonder if this is going to matter to him or not because his temple's going up. He's making his monument to the villagers here. He's chucking up the magic box here where he uses the side of the map and he throws up these walls around here. Uh, and and he's going to shift some, some units into here. Uh, generally speaking, that's the Ajax, that's the Chiron, the two classical age myth units, and oh, sorry, uh, hero units, and also the classical age myth unit. The Minotaur generally gets shifted into this box, it's, and that gets you a lot of value if you work out all the resources. It's like 200 wood, um, it's it's uh, 300 food and 50 gold as well. Uh, yes, the Minotaur's free, but, you know, it is what it is. And Magic does decide to move over here onto this granary nice and early. We'll see if Joe's going to punish this. Um, um, if I was Joe, I would be constantly checking to see what's going on in this location. Constantly uh, checking to see these giraffe getting killed over here uh, and, and seeing if I should send my Ajax and my Cyclops over here. And I did just see Ares here. So Joe's going for Ares. Now, Ares, 
in this matchup does not necessarily mean a rush. A rush is not a bad idea here with this gold mine being here, with this gold mine being here. But Ares does not necessarily mean a rush. What you can do with Ares is you can essentially treat it like a ceasefire denying Migdol. So the idea would be that your opponent fast heroics, you cast Pestilence as soon as you see the Migdol go up, and you just basically treat it as a, as a ceasefire and you get your town centers up and you get all your economy going that way. We do see the house is already up for magic. There is a really nice spot here for the Chiron to see. He can just come in here, ult S right between this house, and then start sieging away um, at this gold mine if Joe wants to do so. So Magic's houses here actually aren't the best. Uh, better would have been if you see the houses, you put them um, just in front of this temple here so that they are pushing that range of the Chiron back, and we come around this way with the houses um, a little bit further back, and that would have prevented... Chiron abuse here, something that Egyptian players really, oh sorry, Greek pl Egyptian players really need to do against uh, Greek. Yes, yes, indeed. So Matt, uh, Joe now is probably grabbing his second town center. It does look like he's getting his back second town center. He's got some berries here. How many goat does he have? He's got seven goats. So we will have to be careful to make sure that he gets out his farms in a good order. So making sure he has enough villagers on wood. If he's making toxodes, a couple more villagers on wood to make sure that the wood comes in in a timely fashion that's the big problem with a lot of um, off roll Greek plays including myself is that you stuff up that farm timing and there we go the Cyclops coming in going to be hitting this location here going to try and take down the temple with the Chiron here to help push back it's going to be beautiful there but the Watchtower does a lot of damage to this Cyclops and basically all magic needs to do is basically empower the uh, empower the, the, the temple with one villager repairing and the, the Watchtower should pick this off we do see that the priest getting sniped here by uh, Joe here, and he gets pulled back. Magic can heal that one back up if he so chooses. And we do see that the Cyclops are getting pushed back right now. Magic could be going for this gold mine here. Looks like he's just a little bit short on the uh, resources there. Chiron does manage to snipe one of those. Uh, one of those priests, the Cyclops gets pulled back though, and Chiron needs to get Alt S. That's the important thing here. You don't want to miss micro this. But he's looking like he's totally fine. His Cyclops half HP temple still going to be alive. I don't think that Magic needs to worry too much about repairing this for the time being. Ooh, gonna be losing an yet another Priest here. Nice play from Joe getting super value out of this Chiron. Already 200 gold down the bank, um, down the drain there for Magic. Now, Joe behind all of this, he's got his two town centers down. He hasn't even thrown down a military building. He might be going for a third town center. He is going for a third town center behind this. This huge amount of damage that he's doing is going to help out immensely and we see with this Ajax up here and the Kinescopus he can push off this hunt as well that's absolutely brutal there now the Pharaoh coming into the fray that's going to be enough to push the Karam back the, the Pharaoh does a lot of damage and he can micro that back and forth heal up with the priest and be totally fine um, or even just hit back the priest uh, with the priest on the Chiron and be fine at this point but imagine if these houses were just a little bit further out probably could have avoided a lot of this pain and misery that he's currently in and the other thing that this is doing which should be pretty um pretty important to note is that with these units being here for joe magic is not going to be able to secure this tech this third town center any time soon nice little uh raid there on that villager getting pushed back and now let's check out magic he's very short on the uh on the gold here he's got a lot of food in the bank no shaft mine just yet he's got uh shadoof no plow is that coming through no plow just yet either so magic is hurting i'm honestly surprised that magic didn't just shift the cyclops and the Chiron into his box because that's that's even more resources. I know he doesn't collect the, the Ajax as well, but he could have avoided all of that damage, but um, it just didn't happen here. But there's the armory now coming up for magic. Town centers are up now for Joe. Se um, the archery range is down and Joe's already throwing up his farms. He's trying to get on the reign of magic here. What you probably should be doing is building the farms with one villager while you get every single time you get the wood. Building the farms. Leave the villagers on the goat, on the berries, and then when the rain comes, then you move your villagers over onto the farms just to be hyper efficient. But that's so much damage that Joe's done in this game means that he doesn't even have to be efficient 
with his villagers at this point to be in front. Now we see the farms are up. How many farms does he have? Ten farms here and five, six farms here. So he's on 16 farms. It's going to be a really brutal amount of, uh, of food income for magic. The problem that he's going to run into is going to be gold. Um, you can get out. I'm going to imagine he's going to be able to get out a full population army here with trade. And the Chiron's revisiting this location here. Uh, but if Magic can mine the rest of this gold mine here, it's 800 gold that he's going to have, or 900 gold in the bank. So that's a Migdol plus, I want to say, 13 units. Then trading the rest of that wood for gold and making sure he gets out all of the camelry he possibly can. You need to go camelry here. Uh, maybe Arch Chariot's not so bad because of the uh, Toxodes as well, so maybe you can go for a little bit of a mix. But... Definitely the camelry going to be important. He can even trade some food because he's going to have infinite food as well because he's got the farms. And he should be okay here. So um, we'll see what he goes for uh, in terms of that. He can utilize the rock to scout out over here maybe and, and do like a, or over here and do a shifting sands onto a gold mine as well as a pretty high risk high reward play uh we just see the toxodes are hitting the villagers now so this gold mine is going to be denied there's only 200 gold left in it for the time being magic should be sending his villagers over onto wood now uh and we'll see how he goes he's going through what looks to be horror 66 67 percent but joe joe is just super super pumping villagers now because of all those farms because of that rain the armor is going up as well so joe can even go for aphrodite here not even go full population just run Rush Aphrodite behind all of this, and um, and attempt uh, attempt to 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 gold star here. We do see the Migdol strongholds going up, but it's a little bit out in the open. There is a watchtower here. It's not going to be denied by Joe. It looks like, but this does not secure the gold mine at all, and it doesn't really do much else. We see the shifting sands happening here. He's pulling the archers into this location. That's a good shifting sands. Every single Toxodi that was there gets pulled in. Uh, Magic is going to be making his way over onto this gold mine. I do not recommend this at this stage of the game when you've got no units from your opponents very, very far in front here. Uh, but it is looking like Magic's going to attempt to sneak some villagers over here. Let's see what Joe's line of sight is like. He does have the 26 HP Colossus here, and he's going to run straight past the Colossus, and the Colossus is going to move in. Not going to be able to kill any of these villagers, but Mag oh, Magic's going for the town center. This is ballsy if I've ever seen it, and he's going to try. He's going to get it up. The problem is definitely going to be gold at this point. I mean, Joe probably doesn't have to care too much about that town center, but he does have to care about this. Maybe going for the uh, heroic edge through Apollo might not have been a bad idea. We do see the rock flying over here, probably a locust onto the farms here, but Joe's got so much wood in the bank that this is not going to do as much damage as Magic would think here. Meanwhile, the uh, the myth units in this rock, it's only a Patsukos. Where'd the Wadget go? Did he lose his Wadget? He must have. I didn't notice that at any point there, but that's okay. The rock's running over here. He can start hitting these villages if he so chooses. The Hades, uh, the Hades town center can do a lot of damage with the Chiron. Definitely out of position here as the villagers yeah. moving up. Magic's got a lot of wood in the back, but he has no market. The market's going up very, very slowly. Magic would love to have thrown up a Migdol Stronghold over here. He's making the units out as fast as he possibly can. Two, almost 3,000 wood in the bank here for Magic as he's thrown up the market to start a trade route as well behind this. In which... But Joe's got all of the initiative here. Magic somehow is in front as he sells all of that wood there. And he's throwing up this uh, this Migdol as fast as he can. He needs to send those villagers over here to snipe the Chiron if he can. Keep juking back and forth. Get that Migdol up and he should be fine to secure that gold mine for the time being. But there will be a curse. There will probably be Nemean Lions as well. The Heroic Age of Hades against Ra is incredibly strong if you make those Nemean Lions. You get the raw of uh raw, raw of what's it called Orthus. the i was going to say i almost said orpheus but it's Orthus. the roar of Orthus for those nemean lions and then you just they the, the egyptian player the raj just cannot kill them um because they don't have funeral rites uh they can get they have to go for it early osiris or something to start dealing with them and there's the nemean lion for joe but no uh extra favor income it looks like only three villages on favor at this point so he's not going to be gone for the spam there the hippocon over here going to be trying to continue to deny this we do see a single curse here which hits mostly villages here hits five villages and two of those military
military units. Meanwhile, the villagers over here happily mining away. The the uh, the pharaoh takes down the Chiron, saves the life of that uh, that pharaoh as well. The camel caravans starting to to come here with a, a little bit of a matrius market. Obviously, he wants to get that one up as soon as he possibly can, and maybe move it to the cor um, corner a little bit later. Uh, obviously, it, it's better to get it started than 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 not. And what magic can actually do here is you can sort of double the rate of which he's gathering from um, gold with this market here. He move the move the camel caravan into this location uh, and then put it in here and then send it over to this market. It's if it's one thing if you're feeling gold starved, you can do with Egyptian. And we do see the market is up for Joe, so he may be going for a very early mythic age here, which isn't a bad idea at all. But the the one thing you can do is put a market on both of your town centers and send them between each other, dumping the resources to effectively double your trade um, income if you can't secure those corners. It's a little known thing. It does require a lot of... Uh a lot of micro, but it, it definitely pays it off if you can uh, if you can manage to do it. Meanwhile, this Patsukos is cutting off so many farms here. Let's see how Joe's economy is doing. Is he going to the next stage? He is going through Artemis here. This could be huge. A, an earthquake over here, cutting off gold. Meanwhile, these units cutting off gold here. Uh, Magic, on the other hand, is he going to the next stage? No, he's throwing up uh, fortified town center. So it may even be better for Matt, uh, for for Joe to just go for this town center here. He's already set up on the front. He can make a move. Earthquake this and then secure it because it's looking like even though magic is full population it's it's just his army is nowhere to be seen I, it's, this is not that many units he's raiding over Into here with the chariot archers which. raiding over here with the chariot archers but yeah there's just not much happening with the magic army just now and now joe making a move in here just about to hit the mythic age uh 90 percent of the way here is hitting some of these villages do the villagers have skin of the rhino they do have skin of the rhino so they're going to survive for just a little bit here and now some mercenary cavalry coming out for magic here to push joe back who's got heavy hippocon ready to make this push and there's the earthquake onto this location the priest goes down the town center goes down as well and can magic get this back up there's no empowering unit on this location for the time being so it's going to be a slow rebuild but there's a lot of villages here meanwhile magic very low on resources does not have the food to put this up finally starts putting up the town center every single villager is onto this town center here in this location so it's going to go up incredibly fast but without the pharaoh it, it is a slow journey for these villages and maybe just maybe this town center will get the uh, will get prevented from going up, but the priest comes in, and with all of those villages, thirty plus villages here, the town center will come up. So magic lives another day, but Joe still putting on the pressure here, uh, and he needs to think about getting out those Heliopolis now, and he will be throwing up the fortress for them. We do see the Chimera coming in, going to be starting to hit these chariot archers as best as he possibly can with the sixty percent pierce armor. He survives for an incredibly long time to say that the very least. Meanwhile, I've got some mercenary cavalry coming out here. Magic still pumping out the trade. No. He stopped trade. There's the trade starting again. Still pumping out the units but with only two big doll strongholds. He needs to be really careful about the fights he's taking. The Chimera coming in from the back. Going to be hitting a lot of the chariot archers. Yet again, a, a priest coming in to hit this uh, this Chimera. But look at the damage he does. It does like 10 damage a shot, which is next to nothing here uh, when you consider the Chimera has 800 total HP. Now the fortress is up for Joe. He's not yet started to make anything as the economy is still a little bit slow here. He's got sharp line. He's got bow or he's got um he's got irrigation so he's just got to get those those late heroic age techs and the mythic age farming upgrade to get really started here to make sure his economy is huge meanwhile these char these chariot archers are just doing nothing to these units of joe the the heavy hippocon just absolutely brutal here pushing magic back with the chimera as well look at that damage they're hitting every single one of those chariots just absolutely devastating here and there's no answer to that until magic gets mythic age and at this stage of the game magic just cannot afford it he's got he's got 25 villages on food but he's just not able to pump out anything uh, in terms of a in terms of the next stage, we do see the pharaoh or the priest over here preventing this chimera from living any longer, doing the 10 damage a shot. Ooh, we do see, oh, 
big damage done onto the villagers. Only three kills though, so lots of low HP villagers. Another Chimera coming into this location, ready to kill off even more of Magic's villagers here on this raid. Boom! More dead villagers. Another three villagers falling here as the Chimera is going to leave for the time being until he gets his special charge back then. And we are, we are seeing that Magic defending admirably admirably here, but Achilles coming in, ready to tank a lot of the Chariot Archer fire with the 44% PS armor, with the 442 HP, the 5.5 speed Achilles onto the Wadjet, slapping him until he falls then the Achilles will finally fall, trading for a Wadjet there not the best trade for Joe, but a trade nonetheless. And these are Siege Towers sitting here tanking a lot of damage. And the Mercenary in the back doing the same. Meanwhile, the Chimera picking up even more villagers on this gold mine, causing some chaos for Magic's economy, who's got next, again, next to no resources in the bank. But the trade route's not bad. We do have a single Heliopolis is out. Needs to keep pumping those out. Maybe even invest in engineers soon. Um, start that trade route in the corner of the map. Wouldn't be a bad idea. He is sending the villagers into the corner to do so. You'll love to see it. He's got a lot of food in the bank to start that one up. Uh, there's a lot of gold mines for him, so it's not that important. Uh, and in terms of right away, but it's going to give him a lot of gold income, to say the very least. Do we have quarry? No, no quarry yet, but he's got the resources for it. He should... He should be getting it. I can't. That doesn't work. But he should be getting those upgrades. Now we've got the villagers all on top of this gold mine. And Joe is just happily just destroying them with his archers here. Has he got any upgrades? No extra upgrades on them. He's got the Artemis tech that he could get and the uh, the Ares tech. So these are almost uh, potentially fully upgradable Toxodes. Uh, absolutely disgusting late game unit if you can get... Ares, uh, Apollo, and Artemis to work. The late game is, is yours for the taking as a Hades player. But rarely do we ever see all those technologies grabbed, especially with Chimera Tyrants coming in here, ready to pick off more villagers that are moving over here onto this wood as Joe sees it. And let's see the damage happen here. He's microing them forward. And look at that damage as he picks off even more villagers. These villagers in the front, though, didn't take any damage there for some reason as one Chimera almost meeting his fate there with 40 HP left, just about to fall. Meanwhile, Joe still slowly but surely winning here. Takes down the mining camp as well to slow down the the gold economy of magic even more who's got next he's got 140 gold in the bank he's got no villagers remaining here well next to no villagers 13 food seven wood nine gold joe quartered off the map here on the top hasn't finished it off though he needs to consider doing that to make sure that magic doesn't get any raids or anything else coming in here and now the heliopolis finally has got his sights set on this town center i'd love to see joe starting to throw up some watchtowers on the front now that he's got the economic advantage here watchtowers to kill off the uh mercenary cavalry get engineers get petropolis walls and he can shut out this raw play from magic very very simply uh, but we are seeing that the uh, mercenary cavalry getting taken down while the heliopolis is staying alive here with 89 hp but slowly but surely is going down 53 hp here these are uh, these mercenary cavalry don't do very much by themselves here. you need a lot of them out at once probably wouldn't have even been a bad idea to just chuck them into the town center before taking them out and look at this this heliopolis still alive with 29 hp we see another one there ready to pop out um, but it doesn't come out you need to sort of train your units a little bit differently here in the uh, in the mid to late game stages when you're trying to make siege pushes don't auto queue at this stage you need to manually train them as you need them so you can pump out those siege units in the right order um, but he doesn't do so he's trying to get some units over here maybe to raid this gold mine which almost has been picked off and now magic is slowly getting closer to the corner of the map with that market uh, the camel caravan are giving him quite a bit of gold here is it 59 101 i thought it was more than that so 101 gold here and now joe just sitting here in between going to be trying to snipe the camel caravans we see watchtowers coming up for joe and this is looking very very dire to say the very least for magic but he will try he's one of the one of the um the uh, the great battlers of the age of mythology community hates resigning and will do everything he possibly can to make a comeback in this game 
And he does pick off the Pharaoh there as well. The Chimera getting pulled back before wanting to revisit. If we check it out, it, it, it's 15 seconds. Or 20, se 20 second recharge time. Second Chimera tire coming in. And Magic finally decides in the 22nd minute of this game to tap out. And Joe gets the first win in this series with some surprisingly strong uh, Hades play here. Uh, Joe is known for his Egyptian play, but this Hades looked incredibly strong here. Um, the only thing that I think that... I think that Magic should have done two things here. First, sit in his base for a bit longer before Take pushing it. out. Second... These houses need to be a bit further out or maybe even a wall. The houses and the wall around here would have been completely fine. It's just, instead of building three uh, priests, one wall around here just to prevent the Chiron abuse or even building a tower as well would have been a little bit more efficient than the priests um, against the Chiron or even shifting sands, the uh, Cyclops and the Chiron into this, uh, into this magic box he's got here. Uh, earlier to prevent all of that pressure that was going on and then he would have been totally fine but because Joe did so much damage because Joe did that huge boom he was able to just pull too far in front if we check out the post game you can see the resource count here is going to be severely in favor of Joe even here where it was um, for a moment there uh, where normally Ra would probably be close to even if not in front in the boom war against a Hades um Joe, Joe just was in front and then he just got further and further in front here. And you see the, uh, even though Magic had more civilian units, all that pressure that Joe was putting on was way too much. And the unit kill, uh, kill loss cooldown does tell the story uh, with a lot more. Well, it's only 30 more, but in this level of play, it's a lot more kill cool, uh, kill. Uh, loss ratio than you need to win and that's the game so gg well played if you enjoyed this game please consider hitting the follow button on the twitch if you're on the youtube hit that subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next game